The majority of the thrift videos I see on TikTok have the most insane finds. I'm talking Miu Miu heels, Prada, 10 coach bags in one store. But if you live in Australia, I'm telling you right now, you need to manage your expectations immediately because there's just no way. But with that being said, you definitely still can find some good stuff. It just takes a lot of patience. And I mean, I've been going to these local stores for over a decade now, which is insane, but I grew up in the fashion citizen, okay? I've loved this for many years, so it is sad to see the prices go up and quite frankly, the quality go down. I was shocked by the amount of cute things that caught my eye, but then when I pulled them out, realized that they had really bad staining, holes that were too hard to mend, but they were still charging like $20 for it. The cheek, the nerve, the gall, the audacity, and the gumption. So yeah, this isn't one of those videos where I can hold up a big bag and be like, oh my God, look at everything I found today. No, I have literally been to over 15 op shops and this is what I've collected. Actually, this one's a really good example of something that I pulled off the rack, fell in love with, and then upon closer inspection realized that it was quite heavily stained. It was too late. I had fallen so deeply for this, I could not give up on it and leave it in store. So I decided it was worth the risk. And after a good hand wash, honestly, so much color came out of the skirt. It was a lot darker in store than what it is now. For the most part, the stains I couldn't get out, I think were actually just due to age. Like maybe it's been sitting in storage and the beads were rusting. So what I did was actually add more beads over the top of them to disguise them. And of course that kind of still fits in with the theme. So in the end, I would categorize this as a true gem. I feel like it would leave the TikTok girlies gagged. Oh, and also I really want your opinion on which way to wear it. Obviously it's intended to just have all of the beaded detail in the front and then it's blank in the back. But on the clippy hanger in store, they actually had it so it looked half and half. And I don't know if I'm crazy, but I think I actually prefer it that way. And these mid-length skirts, I've really been gravitating towards at the thrift recently. I feel like it is the most promising section. Like I almost always find something, even if I don't end up picking it up for myself. Which also side note, can I just say, I know it's super easy to get swept away. And even if it's a piece that you're kind of on the fence about, I feel like you should just get it because you're at the thrift store. When are you ever gonna find it again? But let this be your example, because I saw this skirt a few weeks ago and I was like, oh, it kind of has potential, especially for the shoujo manga video that I'm wanting to film. I ended up leaving it though. And then a couple of days ago, I found this skirt. I'm pretty sure it's even from the same brand, but as you can see, the flower print is so much more refined by just having the pink outline. I know I'm gonna get so much more wear out of this version. Like now that I have this one, I look back at that footage and I'm like, what was I thinking? That skirt is low key ugly, but I feel like you can't blame me. There is just something about being in the thrift store that does something to your brain and at all times, your taste has been called into question. It's absolutely no secret that I love me a good jersey. And this one is very much given jersey adjacent because it has kind of like the mesh in the center, but then it has long sleeves, which I'm not entirely sure how I feel about, but when I tried it on, I felt like it was the perfect oversized fit for me. Plus the number 13 is my favorite number. So I felt like that was kind of a sign as well. I got this for the low, low price of two Australian dollars. Insane to me. It literally looks like the sort of thing you could see them selling on Jaded London or Urban Outfitters. Please tell me I look like I could blend into a bleach illustration because as soon as I tried the top one again, that suddenly became my only goal. Also from the same store for $2, I got this adorable baby pink tank top that just has the cutest bow detailing down the bottom on the waistband. It's very, very simple. Even the bow itself is quite subtle, but I thought it could look really cute layered over a button up shirt. Plus this is like one of my favorite colors to wear. I know we're sadly reaching the point now where people are starting to turn on bows, but if you're over it, send it to your thrift store. I will happily cop it. I understand where people are coming from because some of us just took it too far. The bows on food and stuff like that. Obviously it became way too oversaturated, but I stand by the fact that bows are timeless in the right context, they're always gonna look cute. The other thing I've started doing when the thrift store is feeling exceptionally dry is just also my vision a little bit and start scouring for things that I think have potential for a thrift flip. I'm actually so proud of this one. Okay, I thrifted this little 2013, 2014 era skater dress, but the vision was to turn it into a cute little bubble hem mini. I had to remove the side zipper first so then I could easily get rid of the top half of the dress. And then I just hemmed it so we had a nice neat finish on this velvet 
bit waistband. Since it was a size too big and had a bit of stretch to it, I was thankfully able to reposition it as a low rise skirt, which was necessary. Otherwise I just wouldn't have had enough fabric to create the bubble hem. Like it would have been taking micro mini to a new level. So just keep that in mind. So if you're making a bubble hem from scratch, the process is gonna be very different. But since I have a pre-existing skirt that I'm working with, I am just gonna be using elastic. Annoyingly, I did not have the right size in my sewing kit though. So I had to wait to the next day to go and purchase the right one. To measure out how much elastic I needed, I just put it around my thighs where I thought the skirt was gonna hit. You just have to make sure that you're actually pulling the elastic tight whilst you're doing this. Otherwise it's not gonna work. Also, I know I kind of did this in a different order than what is recommended, but it still worked out fine. Essentially, I just pinned in place our new hemline, making sure that there was enough width to thread through the elastic. Then I just ran it through the sewing machine, obviously remembering to leave a hole where you're threading the elastic. But once you've done that, you can just stitch it all up and it is good to go. You could totally leave it there, but one of my inspo pictures had an oversized bow that I really wanted to recreate in the same velvet fabric as the waistband. I could have tried making this from scratch, but I found that the cheaper method was just to attach a pre-existing hair bow. Obviously it looks very questionable when it's not on, but oh my God, I'm actually so proud of how this turned out. I definitely want to try doing more thrift flips this year. I almost feel like that could be a trend, like the old YouTube days when everyone would be doing the clothing DIYs. I could totally see that making a comeback, especially with how much people love personalization, for example, with like the bag charms. But I never know if that's something that people would be interested in seeing from me because obviously I'm not a professional. Literally my advice is just go for it what's the worst that can happen. The other item I thought was a good candidate for customization was this. The shade of red is just stunning. And of course the neckline with that rose detailing, but it still just looked a little bit daggy on, but I could definitely see the potential of being like a Jenny Kim or twice concert stage outfit. If you know, you know. I'm sorry I didn't really film this one, but I just did it at night when I was watching TV on the couch, but it definitely was a much simpler one. All I did was remove the sleeves with a quick unpick and then hem those up and also do a little stitch in the center just under the bust to help cinch it. I don't know, I feel like it just makes it drape on the body so much better. But yeah, I feel like it was pretty successful. You can probably expect to see it again very, very soon in an upcoming K-pop themed video. And I mean for $2, that's pretty damn good. This one I really need your opinion on because I currently have it sitting in the potential DIY pile, but also it's so cute as is, I don't wanna stuff it up. So I'm very torn. It is this denim midi length skirt. I was really drawn to the wash because it has this almost like green undertone, which I thought was a little bit more unique. The issue is I already have two other long denim skirts and they are quite different from this one, but still I just feel like I would find myself reaching for those ones over this. So I'm not sure if I want to alter it. Originally I was thinking of opening it up down one of the seams to create more of a wrap sort of style because it did kind of remind me of Taemin in Guilty Comeback. But the only thing is his felt a lot more dramatic because it was a full maxi length. So there's so much more fabric. I'm just not sure if it would have the same impact being a midi length, which means my other option would be to cut and hem it into a mini length skirt. I don't actually have too many in my collection at the moment because a bunch of them just don't fit me anymore. But obviously I'm still very undecided. So please let me know what you think I should do. Another basic I picked up pretty much solely because of the colors is this little three quarter length shirt. The baby pink and the lemon yellow. Are you kidding me? This is my dream. I'm not familiar with the brand. It's Bossini. I'm guessing it's an Asian brand just because of how the sizing is done, but honestly, such good quality. I will definitely be keeping an eye out for it in future. And this is what I mean. You don't always have to be looking out for only the statement piece that would go viral on TikTok. You can also get amazing basics that you're genuinely gonna get wear out of in your wardrobe. Another basic I picked up, which is incredible for those of us who live in a hot climate and a lot of the time it is hard to layer, is this little like 90s mesh cardigan situation. You do quite often come across these lightweight outerwear pieces, but for me, this was a standout because it had that extra oomph thanks to the flower detailing. Perfect for a simple little 90s inspired look, but also if you were to lean more whimsy goth, I feel like this is the ideal piece to transition that aesthetic into the summertime. I did warn you that midi skirts were one of the only things I could find and yes, 
I have another one, but I love this. I think it is such a great staple piece to have. It is just black with this mesh overlay. Perfect if you're looking for something a little bit dressier, especially something for date night if you didn't want to wear a dress and wanted to opt for styling two pieces. I know tulle skirts have been trending for quite some time and I feel like actually amping up again recently. I have some that I love, but I thought this would be a great alternative if you're looking for something a little bit more toned down. And actually from the same store and also a blue ticket, so it was 25% off both of these pieces is this stunning slip dress and I feel like slip dresses is something you see people thrift a lot and I too was quite into it when I first got into thrifting but then went on a very long hiatus I just felt like I was never actually getting wear out of a lot of the items but this one was just too pretty to pass up the detailing with the embroidery the ribbons the lace and I just really liked this color combination of the more mauvey tone with the brown so please any slipwear enthusiasts feel free to let me know how you would personally style this I'm hoping I can come up with something cute. I feel like my brain always goes to 90s with this sort of style, but we'll see. I'm always on the lookout for jewelry, but that is something that I feel like has really been priced up in my shops at least. I have seen some Australians get like the mystery bags of jewelry. I wish I could find that near me, but these are the couple of things I've picked up. This gorgeous bow brooch. I do wish it was in silver instead of a gun metal. I feel like then I'd get even more wear out of it, but I'm sure we'll be able to put it to good use still. I'm seriously lacking when it comes to wrist wear accessories, so that is something I'm really looking to up my game. And I found this really funky circular watch. I thought it was quite unique. The other watch I got was more on the dainty side with this diamond shaped face and this really pretty blue. I'm not sure if I want to keep it as is or turn it into some sort of necklace. And then also this replica Sailor Moon pocket watch. Sam actually found this. I think it could be really cute if I change the chain, even using it as like the statement centerpiece for a charm necklace. This was just in the regular shirt section, but a hundred percent was previously pajamas. I had to get it though. You guys know how much I love plaid and also pastels. And honestly, it's not very often that you come across the two combined in one piece. Super cute as is, so I might just leave it, but also kind of debating whether I want to do a graphic on it, similar to how I did the new jeans bunny. I was thinking that some other cutesy character could potentially work, but also this obviously isn't as oversized as the other shirt. So I'm not sure if it's going to have the same effects. One of the stores I went to wasn't actually an op shop. It was a vintage store. If you're from Brisbane, you've probably heard of it because they blew up on TikTok recently, Memory Lane Vintage. Definitely worth checking out, especially if you are a lover of vintage graphic tees. There was so much for Sam to look through. I was hoping I'd be able to get more footage in there, but it just ended up being way too busy. I didn't want to be in people's way. Also, the vibes were low key, making me uncomfortable. Um, don't get me wrong, because it was not the stuff. I really want to reiterate that. Some of the other customers is, and I do find this when you go to like trendy vintage areas, they are kind of fashion snobs. Hopefully you get what I mean. I personally haven't experienced it in Brisbane before, so I think I was just a little bit taken aback. And to be fair, that could totally just be my anxiety. Anyway, please don't mind me. There was a lot of cute stuff. I ended up picking up this singlet because, oh my God, this is the most gorgeous color combination I think I have ever seen, especially because it has this watercolor effect that bleeds into each other. You know how sometimes you have an inspiration in mind and then you find something that literally has nothing to do with the inspiration, but for some reason, fills the same hole. I don't really know how to explain it, but that is definitely me and this top. I guess the correlation is just like fun summer top featuring this blue shade. But yeah, super, super cute. Definitely will be going back next time I'm in the city. I feel like it's getting a little bit better. Like there's a few key stores that I like to hit up. And actually on the weekend, I was supposed to go to Brick Market in West End as well, but it was raining and I just couldn't be bothered. So one day I'll get around to it. But if you guys have been, let me know, is it worth the hype? I've already spoken about this in a previous video, but once again, I just love those sheer white lace skirts that I see all over Sha Hong Shu. I tried to make that gray one work that still had the lining attached, but when I spotted this at Lifeline, I thought it had serious potential as an alternative. It's this high neck dress originally from Witchery, so it was probably kind of pricey, right? But yeah, for $9, I thought it was a pretty good pickup. We can utilize the dress feature, but also I could throw something over the top half and then voila, we have the skirt that I've been dreaming of. So consider this your warning. You'll probably be seeing a lot more of this in upcoming videos. As you can probably tell from the skirt I'm wearing or any of my recent videos, 
I have a serious camo addiction. Like it is something fierce. If I see camo at the thrift store, I am like a bird that spotted something shiny all over it in an instant. And in my opinion, this is one of my best finds. It is this camo, almost a micro mini. It's pretty damn short, but it fits. The original brand is Roxy. It's giving very mid 2000s city beach energy, which honestly I'm living for at the moment. I just feel like it was meant to be. I found it at one of the bigger thrift stores in my area and it was the very last rack that I looked through. So the fact that a Depop girly hadn't already snagged this is quite frankly a miracle. She was just chilling until a true camo enthusiast came along. So I'm very, very thankful for that. And like I said, it is quite short. So I'm not sure how much I'll wear it out as is, but fear not because I'm sure it's gonna look great layered over pants as well. You know what, scratch that. I think it is long enough to wear as is. And if I am uncomfortable, I can always just go for a shirt that's slightly longer. I don't necessarily have to layer it with pants, although I do still think that that would look really, really cute. So expect to see that soon. So yeah, that was my collective thrift haul. Over 15 stores worth. Obviously some I go to and get absolutely nothing. Others I come away with a sizable handful. Let me know which finds you think were the best. And if you guys have had any luck at your local op shops recently or is everything crazy overpriced there too also if you like the little come shopping with me snippets let me know i am trying to post them more over on tiktok now even if no one's watching them i think they're fun but do you guys actually watch things on youtube stories like should i be posting them here as well I don't know. I don't personally use it, but that doesn't mean other people don't. So yeah, would be good to know. But otherwise, I will just be seeing you in my next video. Bye.